praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, come on, put your hands together for Jesus this morning. Yes. How many of y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? If y'all can just take a few minutes to stand on your feet and let's just give God some praise. Let's give him some glory and honor this morning because he's worthy and he deserves it. How many of y'all just glad to be here this morning?
Come, somebody, give God some praise. We do give honor to God, the Spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're grateful to God for this a day that the Lord has made, and all of us have reason to rejoice and to be glad in it. How many glad to be here this morning? How many know that God is good and he's good all the time? He's worthy. He's worthy. God is. God is worthy of all the praise. Right where you are, let's look to heaven as we open up with prayer. Eternal, gracious God, our Father God, we come. We thank you, God, for this another day that you blessed us to be in your presence and amongst each other once more and again. God, we thank you for keeping us from the last time we've met, even until this present time. And even as we've gathered here, God, we've just come to just give you the praise that you so rightly deserve. We thank you because you are wonderful, God. We thank you because you are kind. God. We thank you because you are a good God. So go with us in this service. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give God another great big round of applause. We do give honor to God, the Spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're grateful to God for this is the day that the Lord has made and all of us have reason to rejoice and to be glad and to be glad in it. Thank you. Thank you, music ministry, for going on and pressing on. And, uh, and we thank God. We, let's give the music ministry a big hand. That's it. All righty, all righty. Let's have a few announcements and we're going to move right along with our worship. First of all, I want to say we are grateful to God for this month of September. 36 years of pastor and first lady at First Baptist Church South Hill anniversary. Come on, give God some praise. We give God the praise for that. And then in a few more, few more Sundays, in the, on the first Sunday will be the birthday. But we are doing it all in one big celebration and uh, that retirement. And we'll, we'll give you some information regarding that uh, in just a little while. All right. I want to remind everyone that on this coming Wednesday evening, we will be having our Bible study class. And, and I'll be teaching that class online at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. So we look forward to seeing you, seeing you there. In the way of future events, on Saturday, September the 30th, we are having a Youth and Parent Transformation Summit, and it's called Empowerment U 2023. Uh, we will have financial skills sessions, entrepreneurial exploration, community connection, and more. This is even designed to equip both youth and parents with the knowledge, the tools, and the mindset to thrive, grow, and succeed together. So again, mark your calendar for Saturday, September the 30th, and that's going to be taking place here at First Baptist Church South Hill. All right, I want to thank you. I want to thank Mrs. Tolliver and I. I want to thank uh, all of the members for who already are just having expressions in whatever way, in whatever way and form uh, for the anniversary, for the birthday, for the retirement. Thank you for the gifts and all the texts and everything that we've been getting. We love you. We, we just appreciate you from the depths of our hearts. And we thank God for each and every, every one of you. Now, we want to be mindful for all of those parents, those members rather, uh, who are, who are bereaved. Uh, we certainly do want to be prayerful for the family of brother Michael Parker. Uh, they funeralized his older brother on yesterday. Today. So we certainly do want to be prayerful for Brother Mike and, and the family. And then two of our members who are sisters who lost their mother, uh, Jeanette Robinson and Shirlene Kitchens. Uh, they were traveling on yesterday to Georgia to the home going and plan for the home going celebration of their mother. We are certainly praying for Jeanette and, and Shirlene and family. And we look forward to just supporting them and encouraging them uh, in this week to come. Let's be mindful of all of those individuals who are still either hospital or in doctor's care. Sister Chevette. Howard, uh, Raymond Warden, uh, Marion Butts, and Brianna Outlaw. We are praying for all of those individuals. I want to thank you all for your prayers this week. I did have a medical procedure done, and so I'm going to take it easy today. And, uh, you know, like most post-medical procedures, you just got to go slow. And, uh, and Sister Tolliver's getting on my, word, on my nerves, slowing me down. But, uh, but, but she says I'm a piece of work, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to slow down. And, uh, and, so, and so if you see me leave the pulpit, you know what it is. It's post-surgery, personal things you got to take care of. Anybody who's ever had a kidney stent, you know what that's all about. And they ain't comfortable. And they keep you going. They keep you, they keep you going. But we're delighted. We, we've, got a, we've got a guest speaker this morning. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, well, I'll introduce him after, after we recognize uh, our, our gifts and offerings. We thank God for, for just the blessing 
of you being obedient to God and giving back to God tithes, gifts, and offerings here at First Baptist Church South Hill. We hear and we heed the word of God as God tells us in his word to just bring all of your tithes to the soul house. He says, so watch me, prove me, and see when I pour you out a blessing that you'll not have room enough to receive them. And so we are grateful to God. We are grateful to God just for the wonderful, the wonderful privilege of just having folk who, in spite of all, you continue to worship God through your giving of your tithes, gifts, and offerings. As we recognize uh, God as the, being the giver of all good and perfect things, let's just bow our heads together. Lord, we come now in obedience to your word to give back to you as you have given to us. We believe this morning that all good and perfect gifts, they do come from you, Lord. So receive now our tithe, our gift, and our offering. And if we have fallen short, forgive us now. Help us to realize uh, that we shall be blessed only as we bless you. Father, bless this that we give, and your kingdom will be blessed. Then bless that that remains, and our needs will be met. For it's in Jesus' name we give, and we cheerfully give. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a great big round of applause. Before we go any further, before we go any further, Alan and Dolores Hines are going to come forth with an announcement regarding the retirement. Let's give them a big hand. They have been working tirelessly. They have been working hard. They have been on the go, that committee, in putting things together. Receive her as she comes, Sister Dolores Hines. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, First Baptist. For 36 years, Reverend Michael R. Tolliver has been our pastor, our leader, and our friend. He's been our devoted pastor, delivering word, the word of God like no other. He's been our devoted pastor, our, devo our strong leader, leading us from Hill Street to Galberry Road. He's been our friend, always there for us no matter what. Likewise, the same can be said for our beautiful First Lady, Mrs. Bennett Tolliver. Also for 36 years, she has been a devoted First Lady to Reverend Tolliver and to First Baptist Church South Hill. She's been a strong leader, leading us to becoming one of the largest food pantries in the Hampton Roads area. She's been a friend to many of us, always giving wise and prayerful advice. The retirement celebration of Reverend Michael R. Tolliver, Senior Pastor of First Baptist Church, South Hill will be held on Saturday, October 7th at 5.30 p.m. at the beautiful Virginia Beach Convention Center in Virginia Beach. The retirement committee members are truly excited and happy knowing that every ticket allowed for this black tie event has been sold. So we are thankful for you and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, thank you. Now for the good part. That was a good part too. Um, on that Saturday night, we will be scanning your personalized QR code do you have the QR code, uh, Chris? It's up. Oh, it's up. It's a personalized QR code to allow you entry into the event. Your QR code can be found with your receipt and your email. If you cannot locate your receipt with the QR code, please stop by Fellowship Hall A today after the service for assistance. More detailed information will be given on next Sunday. And let me say this before I go. Reverend Todd is really excited about this uh, retirement celebration. So you guys get ready. We're going to have a good time. Thank you. All righty. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prepare to introduce our speaker, but while I'm doing so, I'm going to ask if I can get the men to move that podium here, and let's move this one out so that uh, our speaker can use his computer. You know, I, I'm, I'm grateful for, for, you know, when I, was, when I was 36 years ago, more than 37, 38, 38 years ago almost now, that when I went into the ministry, that there were, there were preachers, senior preachers in the area, elders that I consider elders, many of them whom now have gone on to be with the Lord, who gave me 
me preaching opportunities, who allowed me, who would call me and bring me in and, uh, and allow me to uh, just begin to formulate and develop the gifts that I believe that God has given me to, to preach. And, uh, and there are just some voices that as, as I see new ministers coming on the scene, recent ministers and young ministers coming on the scene, a few of them that I want to bring into First Baptist Southfield before I leave. One of those and the first of those is one, an individual who just came across my mind uh, this past week because I've had an opportunity to observe him for about seven years. Every time I would go over to uh, one of the sons of our church, J Reverend Jason Knight over at, at Mount Olive, I watch how one of his young ministers, how dedicated he was to him, how supportive he was to him, and how just how the commitment that he had for Christ and, and for the church. I've listened to him as he's opened up services as I've gone over to do anniversary services for Pastor Knight. And so I thought that today I would, I would invite Brother Ricky Rouse to come over and share with us here at First Baptist Church South Hill. He is, he, is an, he is an awesome man of God from what I have observed. Now, now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about Rick, Brother Ricky. When, when, I, when I contacted him last week to ask him if he would come and, uh, and just stand in today and preach today, uh, I didn't know until his pastor told me that Ricky was on honeymoon. He was, he was honeymooning, and he just got in last night at the airport from his honeymoon. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, I, but I'm not going to let the cat out the bag. Is, is Mrs. Rouse here yet? Is she here yet? Is she here? Is she here? Is she here? Ms. Rouse, how are you? Stand up, dear. Stand up, dear. God bless you. This is Ms. Rouse. This is his wife. This is his wife. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here with us. I gave your husband a little bit of counsel when we were back in the back. I said, what you're going to learn, preacher, is that when you're, when you're newly married, even before the kids come, get two cars on Sunday morning. Because, because you're going to want to get there on time, and she still got some stuff that she got to do. And, and you don't want to get in the way of that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that alone. I'm gonna, I ain't going to go, no fur go no further. But we thank God for her being here today. Let's give them both another big hand. Listen, y'all. Who we got here today? The whole choir. We have not seen them since March of 2020. The whole choir, y'all. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. Come on in here. Come on and bless us with about five selections and just be a blessing to us this morning. <laughs> Come on, choir. We have not seen our entire choir since the begin since we ended, the, since we just, get, just stopped having the choir in COVID. That was in 2020. And when I heard that they were coming back in mass, I was just getting excited all over again. Let's just give God the praise for them. Come on, choir. Be a blessing to us. And after the choir has given us presentation, the next voice we'll hear will be our preacher teacher this morning, Brother Ricky Rouse. Let's give him a big hand as he comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. How y'all doing this morning? So, bringing the choir back, I decided to do a song that's very familiar to the church. It speaks about total praise. And the reason that I did that is because in every situation, in every circumstance, you can lift up your eyes to the hills from which cometh your help. Because you know that your help comes from the Lord. Regardless of whatever your circumstance is, you know you have a right to lift up your voice and your mouth and just lift up your eyes to the hill and give God some total praise.
Amen. Amen. How many know that the Lord really is the strength of your life? How many really know it's because of him that we have what we have, we can do what we can do, we can be all that we can be? Because the Lord, he truly is the strength of my life. Thank him for just being who he is in my life. Amen. Give opportunity. I'm going to give thanks to Pastor Tolliver for this opportunity uh, to preach. When he called me, I said I was shocked. All, all the scores of preachers and pastors he could have called, he decided to call little old me. And I don't uh, take it lightly that he allowed me this opportunity. Um, again, when he called, it was on our honeymoon, and I'm a whole husband for eight days now, y'all. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Got to get used to saying it. Still don't sound right. Yeah, I'm somebody husband out here in these streets. Yeah, um, but thank God for my wife Whitney who is here with me on today. Thank God for, again, this opportunity to share his word. Thank God for my pastor, Jason Knight, for giving me this opportunity to come and to stand and declare the word on today. So without any further ado, if you will pray along with me, Father, we come to say thank you. Thank you, God, for another day. Thank you, God, for continuing to look beyond our faults and meet us at our various points of need. God, in spite of us, you bless us. And we come to say thank you, God. We come today, God, to give your name glory, to give your name honor, and to give your name praise. God, we come for no other, no other agenda but to tell you thank you on today. Because you didn't have to do it, but you did. And we're glad about it on today. We're happy, God, to be in the service one more time. Now I ask, God, that you will touch me afresh. God, that you will allow me, stand up in me. Speak through me, Father. May the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, God, be found acceptable and pleasing in your sight. God, move Ricky out of the way and allow me to speak your word with truth, clarity, and boldness that your people will be edified, God, and that you will get all of the glory. This is my prayer, Father, in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen and amen. Well... Our sermon today is coming from probably the most quoted passage of Scripture in all of the Bible, Psalm 23. So I know many of you know that one. If you've been to Sunday school two times or vacation Bible school one time in your life, you know Psalm 23. And it reads, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. You may have your seats. The Lord is my shepherd. We're going to speak today from the topic, the Lord is. The Lord is. Psalm 22 gives us a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ as the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep, making it possible for the sheep to be saved. 
Psalm 24 portrays the Lord as the chief shepherd who at the end of age will come back for his sheep in power and in glory. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in the battle. He is the king of glory. But somewhere between the time we are heaven sent and we are heaven bound, the great shepherd of Psalm 23 is there with both goodness and mercy to help make our journey in this life just a little bit more sweet. David introduces us in the beginning of this psalm to the one who takes care of our frailties, to the one who handles our foes, and to the one who secures our future. Won't be, belong, won't be before you long at all this long this morning, but I'm going to make a feeble attempt to those of us who are here and a part of our virtual audience to perhaps catch a glimpse as to why the 23rd Psalm has become so great for so many down through the years. For you see, the 23rd Psalm really isn't necessarily about rest, about heaven, or about death. These six verses, which we could argue again are the most recited scripture in all the Bible, all point back to the first two words in verse one, the Lord. Before he can be your shepherd, before you can lie down in green pastures, before you can be led beside still waters, before your soul can be restored, before he can lead you in paths of righteousness, before death can be relatable to you as only a shadow, before you can have, cannot have the spirit of fear, before you can be comforted, before you can eat at tables in the presence of your enemies, before you can be anointed with oil, before you can declare goodness and mercy shall follow you, and show sure enough, before you think you're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, you've got to go back to the beginning and get the proper perspective of who the Lord is. How is Lord defined? It's defined as someone or something having power, authority, or influence over you as a master or a ruler. But unfortunately, that cuts some of us out of the equation because we have yet to submit to his lordship and authority. We are the masters of our own fate. We wake ourselves up in the morning. We know what we know because we study hard. We chose to go to the right schools. We moved our families way out in the suburbs so our children could be afforded uh, the great opportunity of a superior education. We put a whole lot of focus on me, I, and we. So he ain't your Lord because you ain't submitted. But then there are some who are, who operate in the second definition of the Lord, and he's not your Lord because you're too busy lording yourself over somebody else. You don't leave space for the Lord to operate and lead you in your life because you're too busy lording over your children, lording over your spouse, lording over your friends, your family, your co-workers, and everything and everybody else that you will have some control over. But you're not willing to let the one who created you lead you yourself. See, the Lord is not some puppet whose strings we can pull to make dance to the beat of our own drum. No, he's no doll that you can talk to and make believe, putting words into his mouth, making him say what it is you want him to say. He's no genie in a bottle that you can pull out and rub and all your problems are solved just like that. And some may be thinking, what is wrong with that? Well, the problem is you can pull the strings of a puppet and make him say and do what it is you want him to do. You can pull the genie out of a bottle to grant your wish, but the problem lies in that once you're tired of pulling the strings of the puppet, once you're tired of rubbing on the genie, you can throw him back into the box you got him from out of the attic, or you can throw him back away until you feel like being bothered again. But you, you are not greater than he is. No, he is the Lord. He is the great I am. When he sent Moses to set the people free, Moses said, uh, where are they going to ask who sent me? 
The Lord responded, tell them I am sent you. See, you and I have to have qualifying statements. I am Ricky Rouse Jr. I am the husband of Whitney. I am the brother of Chris, uh, Christopher and Ashley. I am Ricky Sr. and Delphine's son. See, we have to have qualifying factors, but the Lord just am. Whatever you need, he just am. He's all over the world just amming. He doesn't have to become that, he already am. Nobody created him. Nobody gave birth to him. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He just am. Right now in the Ukraine and in places of war and unrest, he says, I am peace in the midst of confusion. Right now in this church, there are some people who were sick or may even be sick right now, but he says, I am the Lord who healeth thee. He reminds us that though we may feel like he's not around, I am promised never to leave you nor to forsake you. Those who feel like they can't handle what you're going through right now, I am says, I am strength made perfect in your weakness. So don't worry about what you don't have. Don't worry about what you're lacking because whatever it is, I am. See, when you know the Lord or who he, who he is for yourself, but you know who the Lord is in your own life, you'll be able to rely on him to be your shepherd. It becomes personal. There's a story of a man who sang a choral piece or him. He sang the choral piece, The Lord Is My Shepherd, at a concert in a New York City theater. He sang it well, and he received a thunderous applause after he finished his rendition. It was the opening of the show. However, the show closed with the same selection being sung by a different performer in the end. When he finished, not only did he receive thunderous applause, but a standing ovation, and persons were moved to tears. A young man was standing next to the gentleman who sang first and said, you sang that song just as well, if not even a little better than the gentleman did at the end. Yet they gave him a standing ovation and some are even crying in the audience. How does that make you feel? The man replied, fighting back tears himself. You see, I sing about the shepherd, but he knew the shepherd, which he sang about. <laughs> Due to this fact, somebody in here can indeed say that because I know the shepherd, I can say rather matter-of-factly that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be on today. So as I hasten to the text, the 23rd Psalm that so many have come to love and quote down through the years, as I stated, isn't necessarily about heaven, death, or rest. There are 116 words in these six verses, but 114 of them point back to the first two, the Lord. One thing about him is he doesn't change. Psalm 92 declares, that before the mountains were brought forth, or even the earth or the world were formed from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. He didn't just become God or Lord last night. He has no beginning. He has no ending. I'm just trying to tell you about the Lord. Nobody created him. Nobody gave birth to him. He's God. And he's been doing this God thing for a mighty long time. He don't need your help or mine. For a thousand years in our sight is only a day to him because he is the Lord. Seasons change. Time change. God knows people change. Our waistlines change. Our hair changes. But God remains the same. As a matter of fact, the word declares that he is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He is transcendent, meaning he's far away from us in the sense that everything that was made was made by him. He's outside of creation. He's outside of us. He's outside of this world, outside of the universe that some folks pray to and today, which I don't have time to get into that. But we have to realize that he made everything and everybody to include the galaxies. Yet he is Lord enough 
he is God enough to declare in Hebrews that we don't have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses and who, is, who has been tempted in every way that we are, yet did not sin. He is the Lord. He is the Lord and he leads us. God is so much God that he is so much Lord in our lives. He has chosen to manifest himself as one God functioning in three distinct personalities. To keep it short and simple, God the Father is our creator. God the Son is our savior. God the Holy Spirit is our keeper and leader. That's why at times when we make up in our minds what we're going to do and how we're going to do it doesn't line up with his word or with his will, he'll make us to lie down. You go on your way to that midnight creep and your car won't start. You get in the car with the mindset of going where you're going and get somebody straight. There's an accident on the road, and by the time you make it through the traffic, you're so frustrated, you turn around and go back home. That's just the Lord making you lay down somewhere, leading you to be still and let him fight on your behalf. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Give it to the Lord and let him lead the way. He never intended for you to have to fight, for the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. His name is on the line, so he's going to fight for you. So go sit down before he make you lie down somewhere. Sometimes we find ourselves in valleys. Unemployment can be a valley. Sickness can be a valley. Divorce can be a valley. Financial hardships or valleys. Wayward children can be valleys. And sometimes it seems like the valleys come one after another. And some of them may seem to continue to get deeper and deeper. But you got to remember who is leading you. He promised again never to leave you nor to forsake you. He's always there even in those valley moments when you feel so low you don't know which way is up. Just grab hold to his hand and continue to let him lead you. Loved ones may pass away and now your valley has turned into a shadow of death. But it's just that, a shadow. Remember to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. I know it seems rough right now, and those words may seem just like that. They may, just, they may seem just to be words. But hold on to his hand. It won't always feel good. But the words of the song by Andre Crouch become real in your life. If I never had a problem... I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. So follow his lead, and you will find that he'll bless you. He'll prepare tables before you in the presence of your enemies. So when you find people are working behind the scenes on your ministry, talking about you behind your back, when someone on the job is undermining you with other coworkers and the management team, don't trip. Just pull up a seat for them. Because what they meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. Let them talk. Let them scandalize your name. Let them set traps and do whatever it is they need to do. You just make room. Because the Lord is going to give you a seat at the buffet table. It ain't nothing they can do about it but watch you eat. Continue to pray. Be led by the Spirit. We're all human, and sometimes folks know how to push all of your buttons. They know which one to pick, which one to stomp on to get you out of your character. But you continue to be led by the Spirit of the Lord and let the Lord continue to prove himself on your behalf. Because the Lord loves us. He knows our every fault, yet he loves us. He knows our thoughts before we can thank them. And as unpure and as unholy as they can be sometimes, he still loves us. He could have left us to be found out, but he loves us so much, he continues to let goodness and mercy abound in our lives. That's where some of our senior saints get it from. They've been through many dangers and toils and snares. 
they come to know the Lord for themselves that God's grace truly is amazing and his love is indescribable. He loves us through every fault and every failure. And we've got so much to be thankful for. And I came on purpose and with the intention this morning to tell the Lord, thank you for every mountain you brought me over. For every trial you've seen me through. For every blessing, hallelujah. For this, Lord, I give you praise. Because God, you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. And today you have the opportunity to ask the Lord to be your shepherd. If you don't know him, if you've never tried him, today is your day. This can be your opportunity to get to know the Lord for yourself. I believe there may be somebody in here who can be a witness that he walks with me and he talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. And the joy, somebody say joy. The joy that we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. If the Lord has been good to you, if the Lord has made ways for you, the Lord has opened doors for you, the Lord has healed you, if the Lord has comforted you, then you got no opportunity, that this is your opportunity, to give the Lord praise and thanks for all that he's done for you. If the Lord has ever done anything for you, then you can help me testify that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. There's nothing I do to deserve it, but the Lord just keeps on looking beyond my faults, meeting me at my point of need. I did enough last night to not be here today, but the Lord just decided to let my golden moments roll on a little while longer. I don't always get it right, but because I came in here with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, I come in to say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. I'm glad to be in the service one more time because he didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. As I get ready to close, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, I believe that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because goodness and mercy has been following, following us all the days of our life. Our cup just began to run over. And the reason our cup ran over is because he anointed our head with oil. And the reason he anointed our head with oil is because his rod and his staff has comforted us. And the reason his rod and staff has comforted us is because he prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. And because he prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies, we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. And the reason we can fear no evil is because he restores our soul. He leads us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And the reason he leads us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake is so we can lie down in green pastures. And because we can lie down in green pastures, we can rest beside the still waters. And the Lord leads us as our shepherd, and we don't never have to want for anything. So I just want to know, is there anybody in here today who knows who the Lord is? Have you found out who the Lord is for yourself? Has he proven himself to be Lord in your life? He is the Lord of Lords, and he is the King of Kings. He's the Word made flesh. He's a faithful and true witness. He's a shepherd and bishop of our soul. He's the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He's the light of the world. He's the resurrection and the life. 
He's a rose of Sharon. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a lamb of God. He's our high priest. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the almighty. He is the great I am. He's a prince of peace. He is our good shepherd. He's the holy one. He's our bright and our morning star. He is our redeemer. He is the son of man. He is the bread of life. He is our judge and our soon coming king. He is our anchor. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by him. He is the Lord. And can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Anybody know who the Lord is? Has he made ways for you? Has he blessed you? Has he healed you? Has he done for you what nobody else can do? He is the Lord. And besides him, there is none other. Thank you, Lord, for being the Lord in our lives. Thank you for making ways for us. Thank you for blessing us in spite of us. Thank you for just being God and God all by yourself. You are the Lord who heals us. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you for being Lord in our life. The Lord is. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's give God some praise for the speaker, <laughs> Reverend Ricky Rouse. We praise God today. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Somebody just tell the Lord thank you for that wonderful message, for that wonderful preacher, for that, that wonderful message we got today. We just want to tell the Lord thank you because he allowed God to use him today. And he said that the Lord is. What is the Lord to you? He said, the Lord is my shepherd. So he already extended the invitation in his sermon, but I'm going to extend it to you again. Those of you who do not know that the Lord is, those of you who do not know that the Lord is your savior, so those of you who do not know that the Lord is your comforter, he's your burden bearer, he's everything, he is the great I am. And I'm asking you today, will you give your hand and your heart to the Lord? If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, now is a good time to do that. It's a very good time to do that because Jesus died on the cross so that we can have a right to the tree of life. Jesus died on the cross so that we can have eternal life. Jesus died on the cross so that we can have life on earth right now, life more abundantly, a good life. Jesus died on the cross so that we could be healed. Jesus died on the cross so we can have everything that we need. So I ask you today, that if you have never given your life to the Lord, and I'm talking to you here in the balcony and out in Cyberland, wherever you are, with the listening ear, the Lord is, he is your shepherd. And today is a good day to extend yourself to the Lord. Today is a good day to say, Lord, forgive me for I've sinned. Father God, will you please accept me into your kingdom? I want to be a part of your kingdom, Lord. You can stand up. You can raise your hands. You can say it silently to the Lord. You can come before the altar if you wish to. And the deacons and the ministers will receive you. But today is a good day. After hearing that word from that wonderful speaker, today is a good day to give your heart to the Lord. Will there be one? Will there be one? Somebody may have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and you want to repent of your sins. Today is a good day 
to do that, to ask God to forgive you of your sins. Maybe somebody would like to join First Baptist. You can join online. You can come up after the service is over, or you may come up now to the altar. But the invitation has been extended. And the Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. You don't have to wait until you clean up, because you can't clean yourself up. But come now, as you are. Come as you are. Come as you are right now. The invitation has been extended. Will there be one? If not, let us all stand. And once again, we want to thank the speaker for that wonderful message. Father God in heaven, we come to you to thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, your goodness and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us and all that you are doing, Father God, and all that you're going to do. We thank you, Father God, for the message. We thank you for the speaker. We thank you, Father God, for our pastor, Father God, who's just so freely gives way in his pulpit for people to bring the word, Father God. We thank you for all of our people here in this church, our church family, our church members, and all that's going on, Father God, we thank you in advance for all the good that you're gonna do. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, as we leave this place, that you will give us traveling mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. And now for the benediction. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore in Jesus' name. And the church of God said amen, 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 amen. and amen. Go in peace.